and welcome back. Hello, Angelica. I see you already connected. Yes, uh, I am. Hello. Yeah, and everything is working perfectly. We can we can hear you. We can hear you great. Uh, okay, then. So, uh, so yeah. So this is this is the final uh, presentation of the day, and this is, this one is going to be about uh, our program. Uh, the Interreg Central Europe, and we have Angelica from Joint Secretariat of Interreg Central Europe. And uh, yes, Angelica, please tell us tell us more about the program. Hello, everyone. Warm welcome from Vienna, and um, it's great that you have decided to invite me to talk about the future program, and in this way also to give me the possibility to to see more about what you have done in the past months. I'm Angelika van Ness. I'm project manager at Joint uh, Secretariat of the, of the Central Europe program. And uh, I have had the pleasure to accompany this project for the past over, in fact, three years. And it's always a great moment uh, for us uh, to be with a project at the harvesting time when the partners can um, reap the fruits of the work, the efforts they have made um, during the project implementation. I have uh, always seen this project as a, in a way, standalone project and um, a unique one under this priority, priority in innovation under which it was approved. One of the reasons for it is that it is a green project and we, in our program, don't have current program. We don't have such green projects at all. You could really count them on on these fingers of my one hand. So from this point of view, it's a kind of forerunner of what we would like to see in the future, and um, a project ahead of its time. Apart from this, uh, the partnership um, is a very well-grown partnership. Uh, I had the pleasure to to accompany another preceding project, plus teacher in the previous programming period. And I, I was happy to see that this partnership grew so well back then, and it, it was bringing benefits uh, even now. And of course, the lead partner is very strong, competent, and um, very proactive. So in, in, in this sense, it's, it was always it was a project which was always easy to work with, and uh, for this reason, I have also uh, always had a soft spot for it. Yes, having said this, um, I was asked to, to present uh, you, I'll give some insights into where we are with our programming process. So our vision of the new program and uh, the developments of the past months which I'm going, I'm really glad uh, to do. It is, uh, of course, um, a process of programming and everything that I'm going to say today is based on the work that has been um, done by the working group 2021 plus, uh, consisting of representatives of uh, nine member states. And uh, this is a document, this is still a working document, and um, these, that, this does not have a value uh, of, a, of information that you will find uh, in implementation program in the future. It is, it is more or less a screenshot of what, where we are with the program right now. But let me start with... Um, few facts about the current program. It might be useful for those who are not familiar with us. Uh, we are one of the uh, 15 transnational programs, cohesion programs that are supporting transnational cooperation, so cooperation across borders. We have um, devoted 231 million uh, euro ERDF to our projects. So this is our project allocation within the program. We have um, supported uh, over 1,443 institutions coming from nine member states which are represented by the program. 
If you look at the statistic in the middle of this uh, slides, uh, there is 0 0.22 cents. This is, in fact, the amount we calculated that we have per inhabitant uh, of our cooperation area to invest, or we had to invest in our program. We have had, or still have, uh, four priorities. The first one is innovation, under which this uh, project uh, has been approved. There, is, there was low carbon, there is low carbon uh, economy, environment and culture, and transport. As um, maybe it's also worth saying that we have had four calls and this project was approved within the second call. A couple of figures regarding our priority innovation, because it might be maybe of interest uh, to, to you, to the participants. Under this priority, uh, we had the fact that they always the highest number of applications and uh, at the end also the highest number of approved projects, so 48 uh, funded projects. And as I've already said, there are really only a couple of projects that are fitting or answering description of a green project, green you know, from, from uh, hats to food. Uh, so this, this, is, uh, this is something that uh, I think I, would I need to stress here. We have uh, under this priority almost 500 institutions cooperating um, and 76 million euros uh, have been allocated to, to these projects, which also is um, in fact, the Lions uh, part of, 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 of the budget uh, allocation for the project. Our projects uh, have uh, the possibility to develop strategies, develop joint and implement uh, joint tools, um, hold uh, trainings for relevant stakeholders and beneficiaries to carry out pilot actions. Uh, for this specific objective, there was also a possibility to create innovation networks. So in fact, uh, there are a couple of uh, channels that uh, everybody could uh, choose in order to, um, to do the work in the field. On the map, in this, on this slide, you can see the connections that have been established by various stakeholders taking part in our projects. The red thin lines are showing the, the connections uh, between the most active and um, involved, let, let's uh, call it this way, uh, regions in, in our program. Okay, there is, there is a new map uh, presenting uh, also the program area, but we are now already going to, to have a quick look into the future. So nothing will change uh, in terms of uh, country coverage. There will be still nine countries, eight capital cities. Eight capital cities is um, because Italy, although uh, Italy is participating, it's only participating uh, only part of the re of the country is participating in our program. Rome is outside. We have seven cities, uh, above one million inhabitants, and we will have a new extension, a small extension. It will be region of Braunschweig, uh, which will be included region of Braunschweig from Germany. This is part of Lower Saxony, where the headquarters were with Wolfsburg and headquarters of. Um, uh, Volkswagen are located, so it is, uh, I think, good news for all stakeholders of our program which are operating in the automotive sector. But apart from this, this region is also quite strong in um, research and development, so there will be also other assets it will bring into the program. With regard to the budget of the future program, um, the figure that you see refers only to the current program. It was 246 million euro ERDF for the whole program. In the coming period, we have no clue yet. This is uh, because we have not received, there has not been any decision taken by the Commission yet, no proposal that would be um, put on the table. So we, at this moment, we, we hope that we at least get the budget we had with the previous program. Of course, originally we, we hoped for more. 
but uh, with Brexit and um, COVID crisis, it is uh, not that certain. So at this moment, um, this information is um, in fact uh, still not, uh, I mean, it's not clear to us. And of course it makes it difficult to, to discuss or to plan the distribution of of funds between priorities, uh, specific priorities of the program, which I will be talking about um, uh, in a moment. The whole programming process uh, was based uh, on the principle of inclusiveness and uh, this participatory approach was, uh, in fact, uh, start, we started it from the very beginning and uh, we started with, with conducting a transnational survey. And uh, there were also a couple of national activities, events that uh, were, um, whose objective was to, to get inputs from member states and from the so-called uh, local stakeholders on what the actual needs of our territory, of the program area are, and uh, what should be the program contents in the future. This helped us to, to decide uh, on, uh, which priority, on which priorities we would like to focus and on specific objectives. We are at this moment um, elaborating further and fine-tuning actions that we would like to um, offer in this program or propose, as well as target groups. And here on this diagram, we have um, a possibility to see how the distribution and what type of uh, which priority axes have been decided so far. And as you can see, there will be four of them. Uh, priority one, innovation related to smarter Central Europe. Priority two, related to greener Central Europe. Priority three, connected, more connected Central Europe. And priority four, a better governance for cooperation in Central Europe area. As you can see, I think um, at the first look, you can already see that um, the, the heart of the new program will be beating green. We are for sure um, putting now more emphasis on, on this uh, specific uh, priority, priority two. You can see this uh, underlined by the, by the fact that there have been four specific objectives selected for this priority, whereas for, for others, for example, priority one, uh, only two, or for priority three, also two. Another thing that uh, I think is worth mentioning here, that although it is not seen from this uh, slide or from this diagram, but also priority one uh, has undergone greening uh, process. So uh, this 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 focus also on green economy will be visible there, because we would like to balance in this way um, economy and ecological aspects and support our regions which are struggling for. Uh, in this transition to digital, digitized and uh, green economy. And of course, we are aware of the fact that we are, we are the seat of, we are the industrial uh, base of, uh, of European Union. So, of course, there will be also actions uh, foreseen supporting industry 4.0 development and digitization, and but also um, silver economy or um, social innovation. Also, the topic of innovation value chains uh, will and uh, regional resilience in this respect uh, will will appear, and this is uh, of course uh, something that will be complementary to priority two, uh, which is a uh, sense of strict uh, green priority. Maybe to a few words uh, on priority two, as you may see, specific objective 2.1, supporting the energy transition to a climate neutral Central Europe. This is what has happened. We have integrated uh, our previous priority two, low carbon economy under this priority. So uh, this is 
all now under one um, head. And uh, there is an emancipation of the topic of circular economy, which has been included here under specific objective 2.3, taking circular economy forward in Central Europe. And uh, here the, the, we have really tried to, to develop or propose um, actions that will, that will create this uh, critical mass of, uh, of projects that can make change in our regions. Maybe um, I will shortly skip priority three uh, because it's probably a little bit less interesting to, to our participants today. Maybe a couple of words about the last priority, a better governance for cooperation in Central Europe. This is something new in our program. We haven't had it uh, before. It is also it's a kind of priority that was uh, imposed on all Interreg programs through the Interreg regulation. And uh, the, the, the main issue or main challenge uh, here is related to uh, strengthening governance for integrated territorial development in Central Europe and improvement of multi-sectoral governance on all territorial levels in such uh, fields as, for example, digitization or demographic change or, or delivery of services of public interest. So it can be health, it can be education, it can be tourism, social services, um, also uh, the new term that will be important for this uh, specific, uh, for this priority are the regions or governance in the regions with um, with, er with areas um, with functional ties, so uh, it, can, it can be areas where commuting parties are, are meeting or commuters are coming from one country to the other. Anyhow, this, this will be something new and, and for sure um, in, in the coming period when, when the program is launched, it, it will be well explained to, to our stakeholders what we mean with it. Okay, maybe a timeline for for the coming uh, months. Uh, we have started, as I already said, with partner dialogues and transnational survey. In this way, we collected information from all the relevant stakeholders on uh, what we should include in our program. In the past uh, couple of months, we were drafting the program and uh, consulting our working group uh, working from represent with representatives uh, from member states uh, on this and and uh, again got uh, feedback from member states on this process we suppose that the the the, the, the this final draft of uh, of the final uh, draft of the uh, implementation uh, program will be read in december by december 2020 so this year the approval of the program is expected, uh, unfortunately, next year. This is, of course, the delay uh, related to the COVID crisis. And the, the indicative uh, launch of the first call it would be in summer 2021. Maybe to, to just say how we would like to get to a little bit mitigate this delay that was not caused by by anybody not by the not by us or by the commission just by the crisis is that um, we will try to publish uh, call information beforehand so that the call as such uh, can be closed uh, quickly but partners uh, partners uh, stakeholders um, in the field will have time to prepare uh, their projects well. So this is this is uh, the idea we have right now about how we can a little bit step up this process and 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 shorten the time between the end um, of this year. I mean, uh, between the start of the program, so 2021, and the the launch of the first call. For all those who are interested in, in, in our future and also in the current program, there, are, there, are, there is always very interesting information, especially in the blog part where, on our website where we, where we try to promote our projects. 
uh, there is also part uh, related to the future program and then you there you can always look up and and see what what new has happened in the program there are relevant documents and uh, things that you can already probably uh, start reading if you want to know in which uh, direction we are going yeah i think that's that's it for the moment i will be happy to, uh, to answer any questions of course if i if uh, i can and uh, i hope uh, there will be interested <laughs> participants because it shows that there is also interest in program as such thank you thank you very much angelica for this for this presentation uh, thank you also very much for uh, uh, for really kind words about about our projects it's uh, i really felt really warm in, in, in my heart when you were telling about uh, about our project so thank you thank you very much for that and i'm really glad that uh, that the interreg europe uh, will have uh, this new priority uh, that concerns environment like the, the, the green priority as you said especially the one about uh, circular economy uh, okay uh, so if we have any questions for angelica please uh, don't be shy uh, write them down in in, in our chat and uh, I see that Andre has appeared, <laughs> so maybe he has got he's got a question or maybe a comment. Yes, I do. Great. Yes, if I if I may, uh, Angelica, very very nice to see you, and thank you for participating. Um, I have a question. Maybe, I don't know if I missed it, but uh, I remember that uh, there was a um, sort of emphasis on S three. So. Um, uh, smart specialization strategy in uh, the previous calls. Uh, how is S3 now represented in the focal points of the program? Yes, I think that uh, it is. Uh, it has not. Dis uh, it has not disappeared for sure. And uh, maybe I will go back uh, with my slides a little bit. Under priority one, uh, the second specific objective, 1.2, developing skills for smart specialization, industrial transition and entrepreneurship in Central Europe. There will, there will be for sure actions that will support um, this development of skills in our regions that are linked to uh, smart specialization of our regions. Also, uh, there will be action supporting a little bit uh, more independence of our our value chains uh, so that we we are a little bit more uh, we are much stronger and less vulnerable than than we proved to be during the, the corona crisis and smart specialization will also appear under a specific objective 1.1 but that's a very clear reference is for sure under 1.2 so all the skills that you need in order to, to drive okay so so this will be more skill oriented and all under priority one seems like no we will of course take uh, take into account in in many actions uh, also under specific objective 1.2 that's uh, if it if they are also um, in line with smart specialization strategies of regions but of course this is uh, this is one of the issues uh, that will be important i mean this uh, we are uh, supporting uh, quite a number of things uh, we also support cultural and creative industries under this uh, specific objective yes. uh, we will have silver economy social innovation under specific objective 1.2 there will be also entrepreneurship so you see, it is a multifaceted uh, priority, and and this will be one of the the issues. It will be not the main issue. Maybe I will put it. Okay, this. okay. Um, uh, maybe I just have one more comment, but uh, not for you, Angelica, but for uh, our listeners. Um, I have to say that I have experience with uh, the Central Europe program uh, through two projects. Uh, but I've also had other projects. I've, uh, you know, applied for other programs. I mean, in other programs, um, and I, I do have to say that Central Europe, uh, in my experience, 
is uh, the best run program. Um, I have to uh, really congratulate you, Angelica, and the whole Central Europe team um, at the uh, JS. Um, and I would really advise everybody you know, to think about applying because you will have good guidance and support. Uh, and, and I really mean it. It's it's not just being nice or because uh, uh, we received money through the program, but I really mean it. I have experience from various different ones, and uh, it, it can be completely different. So uh, my comment. <laughs> well, as Mark Twain said, on a good compliment, I can live for months. And <laughs> of course, we as program also live on, on this type of compliments. Thank you very much. Uh, I will pass on. It's a good word also to my superiors. Um, thank you. Great. Uh, we actually have one question here from, from Professor Marek Kovalchuk, uh, and it regards Ukraine. What about uh, Ukraine as a partner in a Central Europe program? I've already shown the map, uh, nine member states. Uh, this, is, this is the limit. <laughs> We have not uh, considered uh, inclusion as in a, any type of partnership uh, of Ukraine into our program. And uh, I think this is the question maybe comes from, from, from long past uh, history of our program where, where Ukraine was a kind of associate uh, partner. But uh, the, in this in this um, period, the idea has not even uh, appeared on the table so for discussion. So I can only say, yeah, probably there will be a flexibility in terms of uh, who you can cooperate with, because there will be much more freedom also for stakeholders from our program to cooperate with institutions, with partners from outside the Central Europe uh, program area. So it might be a possibility, it might be the door uh, through which you can also develop cooperation with the Ukrainian partners. I don't know, I mean, we are not that far in terms of um, discussing on that level of detail uh, how it would be. Probably my management has some ideas, but uh, this is not, this, this has never been uh, put to discussion with member states. Okay, thank you very much. And you actually answered my question about uh, like a further cooperation with, with uh, external partners from outside of the, uh, uh, of the Central Europe uh, region. Uh, okay, so if we do not have any more questions, I'm guessing that we can close for the day. Uh, of course, uh, uh, as I hope you all, you all know, the conference will last for three days. We've uh, designed this conference um, in a way to... Um, mm, uh, by looking at the sustainable development model. So uh, we have like each of the day of the conference uh, linked to a different area of sustainable development. As you know, sustainable development is uh, like this linkage of uh, environmental issues, social issues and uh, economic issues, all working together towards uh, one uh, uh, sustainable goals. And this first day was about this more of a social and market issues of uh, biocomposite packaging uh, innovation. Tomorrow we will have a day which will be more about this uh, economic side of sustainable development and um, uh, we will have uh, many interesting presentations about the pilot actions that happened within uh, our project and about the uh, company view on uh, the biocomposite packaging. And on the third day we will be looking more at the environmental side uh, of, of things uh, and uh, also uh, we will um, officially launch and introduce uh, the uh, paper biopack uh, initiative which is one of the uh, uh, biggest outputs of, uh, of, of this project so thank you very much uh, for your uh, cooperation i hope uh, uh, i hope it was all working fine without like any uh, technical problems we didn't get many uh, in fact we didn't get any uh, uh, complaints about technical side of things at all so i'm i'm, I'm really glad uh, and uh, I can uh, I can also say that uh, we have like uh, really lots of attendees, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm really happy about that. So thank you very much, and we see uh, each other um, tomorrow at ten o'clock using exactly the same link 
uh, as we used here. So thank you very much. Bye-bye and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.